Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell Precision T7910 and specifically we're gonna focus on drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the Dell Precision T7910 workstation. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in now. This video is gonna be specifically dedicated to drives for the T7910 workstation. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna go over the types of compatible drives. We're gonna go over the different speeds and the different sizes. And then at the end, we're gonna even show you how to physically install this. And we're gonna show you a cool tool that we like called HD Sentinel to actually test the health score and the power on hours for your drives. Let's hop into the fun stuff. What types of drives are compatible with the T7910 workstation. Well, you have hard drives, you have solid state drives, you have M.2, and technically you can put a PCIe card in if you want uh, for a solid state drive. Uh, but really we're gonna talk about more of the hard drive and solid state drives. So for hard drives, you have SATA and you have SAS. SAS is gonna be the most predominant hard drive that people are gonna use uh, because you do need a RAID controller in order to run a SAS drive inside of the T7910 or any system for that matter. You'll need a RAID card to run SAS. So most people aren't running a RAID card in here and a lot of people are using this as a uh, gaming workstation or using this at home as a desktop. And if you're doing that, you're most likely gonna be using a SATA hard drive or even a SATA SSD, and you won't be going into the SAS side, uh, but those will be the two types of drives uh, on the hard drive side. Now on the solid state drive, you also have SAS and you have SATA, and with SAS, you're gonna get faster speeds, um, and with SATA, you're gonna get slightly slower speeds, but again, SATA is what most people are gonna use on the solid state drive side, because again, you will need a RAID controller to use a SAS solid state drive. So just all notes to, to think about before you order, uh, and just make sure you have the proper hardware when you are upgrading your system. So uh, now again, uh, you can use M.2, twos and you can use PCIe's. We're going to be more focused on uh, the hard drives and the solid state drives that you're going to put in the front, the 2.5 inch and the 3.5 inch. Um, and that is also something that we should note when we will note when we get to the sizes. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about the speeds next. All right, so what speeds can we use? So for a SATA hard drive, you're gonna get 7.2K RPM. Really, that's the most predominant speed. There's technically some other kind of random ones out there, like surveillance industry guys will use uh, like 5.4K uh, RPMs. And uh, there's some other like slow speeds that are out there, but realistically, everything 7.2K RPM, 99 plus percent of the, uh, the SATA hard drives, that's what you're gonna find. Now with SAS, you can use 7.2K or you can use 10K or 15K. And again, that's the advantage of SAS. It's just gonna be faster overall. Uh, but I will note, if you are using a SAS hard drive, keep in mind, if you're spending 10 to 15,000 times per minute, you are gonna wear out the ball bearings and the drives are prone to fail over time. Uh, one of the advantages of a solid state drive versus a uh, hard drive as a whole is you know, using something that's not a mechanical device and a mechanical device will just naturally wear out over time. Uh, but SAS in particular, because it is spinning so, so fast, Will, will, will wear out just a little bit faster, so something I always like to point out in advance. Now, with solid state drives, you're gonna get six gigabit per second for SATA and 12 for SAS. Again, that's the advantage of SAS is it's faster. It will cost a little bit more than SATA, and again, you do have to have the RAID controller. Uh, just a few things to note, but you're gonna get six and 12 for SATA and for SAS. All right, well, let's talk about sizes. Uh, the size of the drive you use really is gonna depend on what type of chassis you have. You could have a 2.5 inch known as a small form factor chassis, or you could have a 3.5 inch known as a large form factor chassis. This will depend on what type of drive that you want to buy and what type of drive you will use. So let's just go ahead and start with the uh, small form factor hard drives. So according to Dell spec sheet, a small form factor 2.5 inch SATA hard drive, it's gonna be one terabyte uh, and a SAS hard drive is going to be 1.8 terabytes and that's a very very outdated spec sheet unfortunately uh, we played around with it and we were putting in again 2 tb on the sata and 2.4 on the sas uh, i'm sure people have put in even higher uh, so if you have dropped in something bigger than what we're going to tell you hey drop a comment down below i'm sure the other users will like to hear that uh, now for a, a large form factor drive it's going to change uh, so for a sata a uh, 3.5 inch large form factor drive. Dell says that you can put in four terabytes. We put in 16 terabytes. So again, that's a very outdated spec sheet. Uh, so you can get up to 16 terabytes for SATA. And Dell doesn't even show the large form factor for SAS. We put in 16 as well on the SAS side. So again, uh, the Dell spec sheet is outdated. Now we'll note again for the SAS, you do need to have the RAID controller. I'm gonna keep pointing that out because uh, I just wanna make sure that you realize if you are using SAS, 
device, you do need to have the RAID controller. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the sizes of the hard drives, let's talk about the solid state drives. So on the solid state drive side, again, uh, Dell spec sheet is a, a bit outdated. It shows 1.2 TB uh, as a whole, and that's going to be for large form factor or small form factor. Essentially, what you'll do, and we'll show you this in a little bit, but if you have a large form factor, you can still use this tray and put a small form factor uh, drive in it. This is actually a hard drive, but you can still put a, uh, a solid state drive in there, um, and that's how you would put it in a 2.5 inch into the 3.5 inch tray. But uh, again, it's only 1.2 TB on Dell spec sheet. We played around with it. We put 7.68 on SATA and 7.68 on SAS. Again, need the RAID controller, uh, but it, it, you can put a lot more than what's in Dell spec sheet because it's just outdated. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the sizes, the speeds, the types, let's show you how to physically install them. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear, be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on, so we are safe to open the machine. So first thing we're gonna do is remove the cover. So if you notice right over here, there's a little button that we're gonna push down and that'll help us remove our cover. So we're just gonna push this little latch down. You'll hear it kind of click off and then you just take your cover off. So you'll notice the chassis that we have is a 3.5 inch chassis. Uh, that's gonna be the uh, large form factor chassis. We'll show you in just a minute how to actually put the drive into the tray. But I wanna show you how easy it is just to install the drive into the uh, to the machine itself. So let's go ahead and install the drive um, once you have it in the tray. And again, we'll show you the tray in just a second. So there's a little groove on the side uh, that's important to pay attention to. Um, you wanna have the uh, drive facing to the left. So the front of the drive, the metal piece is gonna be facing to the left. And then we're just gonna open the tray itself and we're just gonna slide it right in. So it's pretty simple as a whole. And then you just click it into place and it's that easy to install it. The harder part is actually getting the drive into the tray. So we're gonna show you how to put the drive into the tray right now. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to put the hard drives into the tray. So I've laid out uh, both the 3.5 inch and the 2.5 inch to show you how to do both. So with the 3.5 inch, we're gonna go ahead and just put this one in first because it's a little bit easier to do. So this is gonna be the tray that comes with the chassis. And this is uh, pretty simple as a whole. You're gonna notice there's some pegs right here uh, for lack of better terminology, those four metal pegs right there. And what you're gonna wanna do is essentially put those into the screw holes on the side. So when you put the drive in, you wanna make sure that the front of the drive is facing the appropriate way so that the connector is uh, basically positioned properly like how we have it right here. Um, and then we're just gonna simply put one side in and get it sl uh, slid in perfectly. And then what we're gonna do is uh, essentially, and I hate to say this, bend the plastic a little bit. Uh, so you can see we're pulling it out and we're just gonna slide it, slide it in. And it's kind of a pain to be quite honest, not a, a huge fan of, uh, of this design compared to some of the designs for the hot swap trays uh, for say like the power edges. Uh, but this is how you would do it, is you would uh, basically slide one side in and then just kind of manipulate and bend uh, the bracket around to, to get it to work. So that's how you'd put uh, your drive into your tray. Again, not uh, the greatest design, but uh, it works just fine. And then you'd slide it in how we just showed you a minute ago. So now we're gonna do the 2.5 inch. So I laid out for the 2.5 inch, everything that you're gonna need. So you'll see the, the little metal piece, right? Or excuse me, the little plastic piece right here in my hand. This is going to be uh, the piece that you need to convert the tray from a 3.5 inch to a 2.5 inch. So you see, we have it already installed in there. Uh, essentially you just push it in through through the back and that's how you would get it in there and you just make sure that the metal pegs again are uh, facing the appropriate direction and you have everything lined up but you essentially just push it in from the back and then now you're gonna do the exact same thing you're gonna take one side of your drives and you're gonna slide it in and then you're gonna have to uh, bend the plastic a little bit and when you bend the plastic you can slide it in the other side and then just make sure that it clicks on perfectly because sometimes uh, you do have to kind of jostle a little bit and move it around a little bit um, because it, it'll get kind of stuck and doesn't go fully into the, um, to the screw hole. And again, not my favorite design and kind of a pain sometimes to, to get these in, but uh, that's how you would do it. So um, that's the difference between the 2.5 inch and the 3.5 inch. So really the, the whole key for the 2.5 inch is this extra piece right here. And as long as you have that extra piece, you'll be able to install the 2.5 inch. So that's the main key there. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to use HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now. And as you can see, we currently have have 
two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool but as you can see we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software like i said lots of information it'll give you health scores of the drives as you can see the two we have up top they have a hundred percent health score while the one at the bottom has a 99 percent so all pretty good so I hope you guys found this video useful, and if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom-built server, or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock, so you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.